We are dealing with Tropical Storm Ophelia at the moment. So we pulled the boat out of the water and still working on this motor project, motor modification for a little sideline project. So let's get back into the shop where it's dry and bring everybody up to date. And as we can see, the boat is not in the water. It is safely on the driveway. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep that from banging too much into the dock and filling up with water and let's go back to our current status I've been nibbling away at this during the evenings and the weekends a little bit for the last week or two and we've had some successes and some things that have not worked out the way that I sketched them out or the way that I planned and <laughs> I do like a neat shop, but right now this is a disaster zone, which is kind of the case when I'm really, really in the thick of a project. The last thing I was trying to work on, I believe, with some of the last video clips was the coupler situation, and we've got that resolved. So let me show you what we've done for that. These are Lovejoy Connectors. It's the name of the company. They've only been around for about 120 years. I did not know about them until I was doing some research and kind of stumbled onto Lovejoy Company with these couplers. And they make some really, really cool stuff. A lot of folks probably know about them, but I didn't. So what we did here was, this is our drive shaft, and we had some splines. We had six splines on here. This was an 11 millimeter shaft. So got an 11 millimeter coupler here. We sanded off some of the splines got this on here and instead of a like a woodruff spline or instead of an actual spline in there we've got the set screw and a really really tight fit around those and then for the other end for the motor the way this works is we've got this guy on here this is a 12 millimeter coupler and the threads that were on the end of the motor here we had to take those off didn't need them needed the clearance so this set screw is set to a flat side of the motor there. And then we've got our spider connector in the middle here that takes up some of the slop and some of the slack so that if your connections are not perfectly 90 degrees, you've got some extra protection there. At the moment, our electronics are pretty much set up. I did some extension wires here, so we've got some extra run to the controller. Because this motor housing is not really big, this is a five horsepower, was a five horsepower motor, the cowling that's on the top is big enough to cover the motor so it'll look, look good, but there wasn't enough room in there for the controller, so this will be outside of the motor. But as far as the electronics, for our e-bike here, turn it on, we're running on one of those big guys there got two more in the boat and if we go to our throttle here turn this a little bit we got our motor action there so the electronics part is working okay the next challenge and this is something that has been really stumping me it took a while to figure out the coupler situation and if we turn this then our shaft turns. I've got the prop off because I don't need a prop turning 2,000 revolutions a minute in here. So for testing, that's been removed. But for mounting the motor, the electric motor, to this, this has taken a lot of thought. And we've tried lots of different things. Some things have been more successful than others. And this is where we are at the moment. A good friend of mine, Dude, Jason, thank you very much. Sent me a couple big plates of aluminum. So I've got two of these one foot square, 12 inch by 12 inch, quarter inch thick aluminum plates. And we cut off one piece here for our mount here. And what we're gonna try now is these 90 degree angles that I picked up at Lowe's. And we'll flip this around the other way. We're gonna see if we can mount these to the motor. When they welded the bracket on here, surprise, surprise, that's not a perfect 90 degree angle on there. But again, because of our coupler here and some slack that this little spider gear will take up, we don't have to be perfect. We want to be as good as we can get, but we'll see where this goes. 
This shows the motor, the electric motor, sitting on top of that drive shaft, and nothing is is really holding this up. I've got two bolts here. We've got two threaded inserts for the motor here, which I cut the ends off here just as temporary supports. It would be nice if we had four of those. That would be wonderful, but we don't. So we've got to use the brackets that we've got, and you can see how that coupler fits so well through there. Starting to put these clamps on, or these 90 degree angles. We'll have to drill some holes through here. We do have a clearance under here that we can take advantage of. But we've been very limited on the bolts that we've got for access there. I think the best way to get this set up is to have lots of clamps and do lots of different configurations and different angles. It's not going to be perfect. We're just trying to get as close as we can get as far as the alignment for the motor and that spider gear will take up some of the slack. So it looks a little bit off, but it's really solid at this point. At least the clamps are holding it. So if we go to our throttle. And that was probably about 60 or 70 percent of the throttle. I don't want to go too high because we just have this clamped right now. But I think the next step here is to run these bolts through and really get this secure. Originally I was going to have these angles in the center here, but the way that that was welded onto the back and a little bit off angle, this is a better way to go about it. We didn't have enough clearance on the sides, so let's get this bolted down. Well, we need to clean this up a little bit, and I want to put some stainless steel, a washer or two in here, and again, because this was welded a little bit off true and we've got a little bit of a fudge factor here so we've got a couple washers here we'll add one or two here this side is pretty much okay we're pretty much lined up as far as the coupler and the adapter and everything and we can reach a max speed at the prop of a little over 2200 revolutions per minute which is pretty good pretty full on we've got about a two to one reduction which is pretty standard for the lower unit and this is really solid so again a shout out to my friend that sent me some aluminum plate here and I has noted I need a couple more stainless steel bits of hardware these carriage bolts were just temporarily put in here to lock this down so I could do some speed tests but these are going to come out the rest of this all the other hardware is stainless steel so that shouldn't shouldn't rush shouldn't corrode and this is really solid we're not going anywhere with that so we'll give it a little bit of throttle here we're on our way that's the wiring that we will permanently mount on here somewhere i don't know where yet but it's just sitting here at the moment but it's nice that the cowling covers and we're good to go in that regard and again the controller will have to be in a separate box because there's just not enough room in this five horsepower cowling top part area and i had to put the cover on just to make sure that all the electrics and everything would fit inside i haven't permanently mounted all the wiring it's just kind of stuffed in here at the moment but it's kind of cool that we have Pretty much an operational motor at this point. A lot of cleanup to do. I want to do some graphics on the side with the CNC, make some vinyl lettering that talk about electric. We'll kick this a little bit. It's going to sound kind of loud because we're right up on this thing and I'm in my shop so everything kind of reverberates. So. <laughs>
and that's kind of the sweet spot about that 2200 revolutions per per minute so we're getting there cool mm -hmm. 